Hey, Daniel Bach here from JumpScience.com. This is the second video in the series on top speed. So we learned in the first video that vertical force production determines how fast you are capable of sprinting. However, sprint mechanics determine whether or not you actually sprint as fast as you are capable of. Okay, uh, A lot of people outside of the track world don't actually have the skill to sprint at their true top speed. They might be close, they might be 95, 98%, uh, but they don't actually have the skill to sprint as fast as they're capable of. Okay, So developing skill is very important when it comes to improving top speed. Okay, So what characteristics do we need in our sprint mechanics in order to sprint as fast as possible? Two things. Uh, one, you need to be in position to apply as much vertical force down into the ground as possible and two you need to minimize horizontal braking force or at least minimize it as much as you are capable of okay so let's talk about being in position to produce vertical force uh, the main thing we're looking at there is posture right we want to run tall and upright and we want to be square ahead with your chest and with your hips Okay, so if you're running bent over or if you're twisting, that's going to take away from your force going into the ground. That's going to slow you down. Okay, then another thing people like to talk about with vertical force is the level of knee bend, right? So as you bend your knee more, you get weaker. That's a, a weaker biomechanical position. So when you're sprinting, what you want to do is strike the ground with a stiff leg and not let your knee bend. That way you're gonna get more force pushing into the ground, you're gonna be faster, okay? And this is a noticeable difference you see between fast and slow sprinters, is fast sprinters have much less knee bend, okay? So, people will say you need to train this technique of bending your knee less. Uh, and my question is, is it really a matter of technique, right? When you hit the ground, gravity's pulling you down the faster that you can switch on vertical force to extend your leg to resist that collapse, the stiffer your leg's gonna be, the less your knee is gonna bend, the more force you're gonna get. So this is actually a product of muscular force production, right? The faster you produce force, the stiffer your leg, the less your knee is gonna bend. So your knee bend, not really a matter of technique, it's a matter of force production, okay? Your force, determines what your technique is in this case. All right? Oftentimes, a lack of technique is actually just a lack of force in disguise. Okay, let's talk about horizontal braking force. So there's two factors that determine how much horizontal braking force you have. Uh, one is the location of the foot relative to the hip when you strike the ground, right? We talked about this in the first video. If the foot is out in front of the hip, the force that you're pushing down is going to be at an angle, there's a horizontal component to it, that means the reaction force is gonna have a backwards horizontal component. Okay, that's braking force. So what we want is to get that foot strike directly underneath the hip so that the force that you're pushing is totally vertical and the reaction force is vertical and there's no braking. Okay, so that's why we train ourselves to snap the foot under the hip while sprinting, right? That's where your B skips and your cycle drills come in. Okay, uh, but there's this other component of the velocity of the foot relative to the ground as it strikes. Okay, so even if your foot strikes the ground directly underneath the hip, if it goes into the ground at a forward angle like this, when it hits, it's going to push the ground forward. The ground is going to push it backwards, and depending on the stiffness of your leg, some of that force push into your foot is going to get transferred into you. So when we're snapping the foot underneath the hip, we're trying to get a vertical force component here, but we're also trying to create zero velocity of the foot relative to the ground. Okay, again, if it goes forward with forward velocity into the ground, there's going to be some braking there, so we want to create zero velocity as you hit the ground. Now, if you watch slow motion videos of sprinting, you can see this very delicate balance happening where the foot is moving forward and then as the sprinter snaps it under, you'll see that foot come pretty much to a stop right before it hits the ground, okay? So we're trying to get the foot under the hip 
and create zero velocity of the foot right before it strikes. Okay. Now, it's hard to say exactly how much one of those factors can cancel out the other. Right? If you're directly under the hip, but you have a little bit of forward movement of the foot, uh, is there still braking force? If you're a little bit out in front, but you have zero velocity of the foot, is there still some braking force? Yeah, I think in both cases, yes. I don't think you can eliminate either factor, okay? I think both of those things matter. Um, but I don't think either of those extreme cases exist where you have a lot of one thing and, and none of the other. Uh, I think the two things are going to improve together, right? The more that you get the foot underneath the hip, the less velocity it's going to have as well, okay? Those two things are going to progressively get better together. And it's not really worth trying to calculate exactly how much force we get from one or from the other, okay? The two things are going to get better together. Okay, now, more braking force is going to require more propulsive force during the latter part of your contact with the ground, right? You have to balance out the deceleration with some re-acceleration, okay? So you're going to have to push behind you more, you're going to have to get that force pushing backwards at an angle, get that horizontal reaction force pushing you forward. Um, so this is going to be more backside mechanics, okay? So if you have more braking force, you're going to have to have more backside mechanics. Now the ideal mechanics are going to be striking under the hip uh, with zero velocity of the foot as it, as it hits the ground. And then because you have no braking force, then you don't need uh, very much backside mechanics, right? You don't really have to push behind you. So your ideal mechanics are going to have none of that, none of this, or very little of this, okay? And that's going to be associated with a higher knee, right? More, more front side mechanics and minimal backside, okay? Those are the ideal mechanics that everybody's trying to get. Okay, now comes the tricky part. It's important to understand that there is a lot of give and take here. What I mean by that is if you change one thing, you change another thing. Okay, so let's say you have some braking force, and because of that braking force, you need more backside mechanics. Most people say that's bad. Okay, but if you have more braking force, more backside mechanics, you get more time on the ground. More time on the ground you can build up more muscle tension. More muscle tension equals more force pushed into the ground, right? Well, maybe. The other thing here, though, is we have uh, more of a horizontal component to your force, which reduces the vertical component. Uh, and we also have more knee bend in this scenario, which means you're in a weaker position, means it takes more muscle tension to get the same amount of force pushing into the ground. All right, so we have all these factors and it's all this give and take and where and there do you get your top speed? Well, it's too complicated to calculate, honestly. Um, so let me simplify it. More braking force and more backside mechanics are going to bring along with them longer ground contact time. Okay. Whereas our ideal mechanics, uh, no braking force and minimal backside mechanics, are going to come along with shorter ground contact time. Okay. But as we learned from the first video, shorter ground contact time requires higher, faster force production. Okay? Ideal mechanics require really fast vertical force production. You can't run with Usain Bolt mechanics without Usain Bolt force. If you produce force more slowly, then you need braking force and you need some backside mechanics because you need the time on the ground. Right? This is very, very important to understand. Different athletes' top speed is going to occur with different amounts of braking force and backside mechanics. Different athletes' top speed is going to occur with somewhat different mechanics. Okay? And where you are on this spectrum from uh, lots of braking force and lots of backside mechanics to no braking force and minimal backside mechanics where your top speed occurs on that spectrum is determined by your vertical force production. Okay? Your mechanics match your force. 
force has a big influence on technique. All right, so we have learned that your force production determines how fast you are capable of sprinting. Your force production also determines what your ideal sprint mechanics are. Okay, force is king. That being said, you still need technique work to find your ideal mechanics. Okay, skill is extremely important in sprinting, right? But people need to have uh, an accurate understanding of how force and skill interact and a realistic expectation of what technique can really do for them. All right. So at a very basic level, uh, improving technique can make you faster immediately. And the main thing I'm talking about here is posture, right? Like if somebody's running bent over or if they're, they're twisting their hips and their shoulders all over the place instead of having nice good arm action, uh, you can fix those things and make them faster immediately, okay? But let's say you have somebody who's been uh, doing track for a couple of years, you know, a fairly experienced sprinter, and you're looking at little details like exactly how high is their knee or uh, where exactly does their foot recover to? Is it directly under the hip or slightly behind it? Or, uh, you know, how many inches in front of the hip is their foot striking? You're looking at those little details uh, and those things, if you try to change them, it's not going to make the person faster immediately. It's actually going to slow them down. Okay? Those things can change over time as that person's force production improves. Okay? Because getting closer to ideal mechanics requires more force production. In order to change those things in the short term, people have to slow down. Okay? Because those mechanics uh, bring with them shorter ground contact time but you have a certain ground contact time that you need and you can't just decide to be able to do shorter so you uh, then have to reduce your horizontal velocity in order to use uh, you know ideal mechanics okay now I've seen this a thousand times right I, I work at a place where we train people for speed okay so I can have somebody run a flying 20 and we'll time it and we'll film it and we'll look at it and uh, we'll say, okay, so now let's try to, you know, recover your heel a little bit faster under the hip, get the knee a little bit higher, whatever. You know, we, we say, let's try to change that a little bit. If they go out there and they change that, they will run slower every time, okay? Every time. Because they don't have the force production to actually be able to run at top speed with those mechanics, okay? Now, that doesn't mean it's not a good thing to do. Right? Running a little bit slower with good mechanics is a good thing to do. You're developing faster mechanics so that as you improve your force, you're going to have the skill ready and waiting, right? Okay, it's still a good thing to do, but you need to understand that if you just decide to run with higher knees, it's not going to make you faster, it's going to make you slower. Okay, the final lesson here is you need to have a two pronged approach on speed development. Okay? You need an effective plan for improving your force production to go along with what you're doing to improve your technique. All right? Don't spend your whole off season doing a million B skips. Okay? A million B skips by themselves are going to do nothing for you. Okay? Technique development without force development doesn't get you anywhere. All right? You always need to be training yourself to produce more force very quickly. Okay? That's the lesson.